there's a couple of things that I just want to want to come back to. First of all, when you were doing those sessions back in those days, were they one takes? Were they, or did you get a couple of takes? Were they? Generally, two, three takes. Okay. That was it. I I always wanted to hear the song. Yeah. So that uh, somehow I was a method drummer. I was also working as an actor, and I saw how yeah. uh, so many of these wonderful method actors worked. They wanted to know what the scene was, why is it big, is it small, whatever. This is what gave them the impetus to act out whatever they were doing. I always wanted to hear a song because this, that song is a story. And if it was a very gentle song, I wasn't, I didn't want to be up there smashing and crashing and everyone look at me or listen to me on this record. Mm. There's a singer yeah. telling a story. Yeah. So people want to hear the story. And pop music in those days, and even the early rock days, if you listen to the biggest rock and roll records, you'll know what they were singing. You'll understand the words. It wasn't just a mishmash of, of, of uh, well, I hate to, you know, jump down, down the throats of today's superstars. But tell me the name of some of those songs. Tell me what the story is. There's no story. Uh, it's just a whole other world out there today. And I, I, I am so fortunate to have grown up during that era, having studied and knew how to read music. I could read anything. Yeah. I, might, I might run into something that really is a killer. And fortunately, there was always some great percussionists, Emil Richards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but those guys were always there, and I would just quietly ask them, "What are we in this passage here?" And they'd say, bah, 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 bah. "Perfect, you got it." Mm. I was never panicked because I did know how to read music. Um, I'm trying, I'm sitting here trying to remember the name of the wonderful percussionists that did all that stuff and helped me so much. Anyway. The point is that if you know your instrument, and regardless of your instrument, I don't care if it's an oboe or a set of drums, yeah. you really must know your instrument. Once you're relaxed with it and, you're, and it's second nature, then you're playing fine right. and you're great. Let's fast forward now to um, something again that you uh, known for, and we've, we just discussed this actually over lunch, but the drum kit, okay? You use single-headed toms, those, well, tell me a little bit behind me. Uh, well, I'll tell you what happened was that being what I consider myself a musical drummer, I had studied piano, I had studied voice, I had studied dance, tap dancing, um, I actually played bass on songs. I've actually strummed guitar on certain songs when it was needed as an overdub or something. And I found that, that once again, studying music and finding out the cycle of fifths, the way chord structures work. When songs, uh, the guitar players talk about sevenths or ninths or elevenths, thirteenths. They're just numbers, but they're, they're just amazing what they do with a chord, a three-note chord, how they can add and subtract to those chords and make them absolutely beautiful. So, um, the point is, once you know your instrument, you're going to be just fine. Now, I know that you, you asked me a question. About the drum kit. The, oh, the, the tom Yeah. I'm a drummer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you asked me about the drum kit. Yeah, why? I started, I was working in this new genre called rock and roll. And all of a sudden, people like Terry Melcher came along, a great producer at, at Columbia Records. He was the son of Doris Day, fine actress and singer. And he wanted, we started the old, and I'll do it on myself here, I don't, where I'm not wearing a mic that I'll break something. We started doing that. The music was do do da da do do da da do do da da do do da da do da Like 
Batman. Yeah. Batman. We started doing this kind of stuff, which caught on. All of a sudden, this is the rock and roll beat. Well, all of a sudden, these people like Terry Melcher, and he had a group called Bruce and Terry. It was Bruce Johnston, it was Bruce from the Beach Boys. Mm. A brilliant pianist. Yeah, I used to do record dates with Bruce, a terrific guy. And uh, Terry was getting ready to record the great Frankie Lane, who was a major, major star in those days. Frankie Lane was the first recording artist to receive a salary of $25,000 a week in Las Vegas. Okay. He was making a hundred grand a year. And of that, part of the stipulation in his contract was that Frankie Lane would be paid in silver dollars. And for years, Frankie Lane, God bless him, cornered the market on silver dollars. And he and his wife and the family would go through every week, all they would pick out the certain, they knew what was what. Mm. Anyway, uh, and I'm getting to the reason. I had a set of timbales, metal timbales, for Latin music, of course, that I would use on overdubs, certain, certain records that I did. And uh, Wendy, that was one of the records where I overdubbed timbales, some of the Latin stuff and so forth. And I found that by loosening the heads a bit, I could get some decay on these drums. So when you hit a drum, it was boom, because I had loosened the head. Mm. Instead of the high rack, you know, with the way timbales yeah, are. Yeah. So I, I put a tom-tom a holder on the small timbale, and I put a, three legs on the what I call the floor tom, Timbali, and now I had two sounds that would fall off. Beom, beom. And we did a record with Frankie Lane called Don't Make My Baby Blue. And if you ever get to hear that record, you will hear what, that's what started my experimenting with the fall off. So I'm doing all these great fills. To me, they were, everybody said they were great. We were, and then I wanted an actual octave of music so that I could play an entire different sound for an entire bar of music or two bars or whatever it took. And Ricky, God bless him, the kid was my drum tech for over 50 years. He would help me. We started experimenting. There's a gentleman. Uh, his first name was Hal uh, Blamar. He was making the uh, drum shells out of the plastic stuff. Okay, the acrylic ones. Yeah. yeah. And we spoke with him, and we ordered various sizes, lengths. They were like and drummers would understand, or, or percussionists would under, percussionists would understand. There's a little unit called the boobams, mm. and they sound like miniature bongos, but they had tubes on them. Okay. They had great, great sounds. And I thought if I had a set of an octave of drums like that, with the fall off, beom, 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 beom. Perfect example, the Carpenters. Yeah. Listen to the fills I do on the mm. Carpenters records. You'll hear those drums at the time. Amazing sound. Today there's elect there are electronic drums. Yeah. You can hit a, 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 a decay on a drum and it'll go for as long as you want. Yeah. That's all adjusted. Well, this changed the drum world. I did I used those drums in at Caesar's Palace with Nancy Sinatra. The great these boots are made for walking, and we did a, uh, an Ed Sullivan special, and Nancy had me do a drum solo on that special. 
And it, I used that big set of drums. In Las Vegas, of course, and now on the Ed Sullivan Show, completely changed the drum world. I mean, within weeks, every drum company was coming out with, they started calling the rack toms. Yeah. And I understand, you know, that's the way it works. But my toms were four on one side, three on the other side, and they were made to roll right into yeah. my regular set of drums and match the layout. And, you know, and when I studied drums, we learned that everything was in reach. We didn't, we weren't playing cymbals up here or breaking our wrists or getting arthritis. And so we experimented with these drums from Mr. Blamar until we had the right length, bottomless, yes, thank you. that I could loosen just enough perfectly and to have the fall off. Boom, 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 etc. And the way I used to tune them, because drummers used to ask me, how do you tune them? Well, I'd go for the lowest drum and I would use the song, I Got Rhythm. Perfect song for a drummer. Mm. I don't know if today's drummers would even know that song. Well, they should then. But it was, I got rhythm, and I got bum, 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 b